We're down in the river, and John here, being the managing biologist of this river, seemed like a good opportunity to learn what we can learn. So you got a crazy backpack. It's an electrofishing rig. Yeah, there's a You're carrying electrode. electrofisher. This is the electrode that puts the electricity into the water. And uh, I wanted to show you guys some mottled sculpin, because oftentimes I say that this is the most important fish in the Colorado River, but a lot of people will fish their entire lives or for years and years never seeing one. They're um, kind of a cryptic species because they live down underneath the rocks and in the gaps between the rocks and they don't come up. And you said they live down in the rocks. Yeah. So a guy, a fly fisherman or a, a lure fisherman at home, this, this explains a lot about why tube jigs work. Let's see, there's at certain times of year, you know, like during runoff and stuff like that, there's a certain number of them that are, they're just getting knocked loose, you know? So there's a drift happening I'm just a, like there's a just like there's a drift of, of nymphs going on you know that's what they look like guys little flat heads on them and uh, that's a mottled sculpin just for the record people gore canyon is right here we're in the gore canyon parking lot of the of the gore canyon trails there are certain types of pollution that they are more sensitive than trout to oh so really? they can act as sort of a canary in a coal mine with water quality stuff all right, guys, so we caught these in the span of like two minutes of electrofishing. And Rick, I want to quickly point out this fish is fine. We'll put him back in the water, he'll be fine. The electrofishing does not kill them, it only gives them a temporary stun. Now, you can see he's built to live on the bottom, no doubt. Yeah, they, they almost walk with these fins more than swimming. And you say no swim bladder? Nope, no swim bladder. They stay on the bottom. They change colors with the light as well, just like any other fish. So you'll get some darker colors, some greener ones, some browner ones. If you're trying to tie streamer flies, uh, that's the fish you want to look at. And there's basically one of these under the majority of the good cobbles. The cobbles that are in the right depth and in the right place has one of these underneath it. So it's obviously a dense food source and they are eating bugs, midges, things like that. So they're competing with trout in that regard, but they're ultimately a great food source for the trout. The substrate of this River, give us a 30 second rundown of why that's so important. Well, the, the riffles uh, from, from the Blue River confluence on down, the riffles in the Colorado are really healthy and we'd like to keep them that way. The cobble does not have fine sediment filling in the spaces in between it and underneath it. You can dig down, you know, over a foot into the riverbed here and still find bugs down into the cobble, you know, and that's not the case in, in some rivers where we have embedded riffles, where it looks like a good riffle, but if you really look at the spaces in between the cobble, they're full of fine sediment. So that's key. So one of the snaggier places, riffles that you can fish is probably gonna be a good place to catch fish for starters. Look at that sculpin. Yeah, got a sculpin, nice. got a little uh, dragonfly larva. Or... That looks like a good thing for a trout to eat as well. Yeah. And then you get, just by flipping that rock, caught another one of those sculpin. Didn't even need a fancy electrode right there. That'll give you some idea how many sculpin are in here. It looks like you got a stonefly yeah, there. Small stonefly. Okay, we're gonna let him go, the fish. That's the stonefly. There's a couple Terranarsis in here. See, these are younger Terranarsis. You gotta remember, oh, there's this one is September here. now. And um, so the Terranarsis that are in here are, are ones that were not mature this year to hatch. Oh, gotcha. You know? So they're a little bit smaller, but by next spring, these guys will be bigger and it, ready to hatch. If you're a fly guy, this is a bug you want in your river. Yeah, absolutely. That's a very valuable. And there's really only three rivers in the state that have robust populations of these. It's here, the Gunnison, and the Rio Grande. Well, we've got quite a few mountain whitefish in this section of river, and um, they occur from here all the way down past Glenwood Springs. They were stocked by our agency um, in the early 1900s in Glenwood, but we don't know for sure how they got this far up because if they got here on their own accord, they would have had co to come past the Shoshone diversion, uh, sure. which seems a little bit uh, far-fetched. So we're not really sure if it's a distinct separate population from the ones around Glenwood, but sure. um, you know, when they're one year old and eight or nine inches long, that's a pretty good prey source also. And they sure. they also provide some good fishing, especially in the spring, like March. Yeah. I don't know, It seems that seems to be the time to catch whitefish for whatever reason. Huh. So then they're out and about and the brown trout will eat them in here. Yeah, yeah. And brown trout, you already told us earlier in the show, guys, brown trout, by the time they're about 14 inches or so, are looking for meat, if possible. The more The more the merrier, as far as that goes. Yeah. That's why we talk so much about them loving big lures, big flies, big plugs, because if they can find it, they're going to eat that first. They'll eat all these little bugs, but if they can oh, find yeah. a big sculpin or they can find a whitefish or a baby trout, yep even baby brown trout, game's over. That's right. So that's thing to keep in mind. John, this has been fantastic. John Ewert, managing bio right here in the river. Uh, 
Williams Fork, give, give, us, uh, give us your cred real quick. Williams Fork. Rivers? Yeah. Uh, Blue River, Williams Fork, Colorado, Fraser River. So guys, if you like to fish in any of this area of Colorado at all, you've probably fished in his waters. Give us some of your reservoirs. Granby? Yeah, Dillon, Granby, Green Mountain, Wolford, Grand Lake, Shadow Mountain, Williams Fork. There you go, guys. Biologists, these are the guys on the ground. These are the guys that work hard. These are the guys that were all about fish first. Keep that in mind. Uh, it's a really important job that these guys do to keep us uh, up to speed on what's going on. And we go out with you guys at any opportunity we can. So I appreciate very much you coming out. Thank you. Got to do some fishing with him. Uh, good to get you out of the office for a little bit. Yep. And uh, and guys, get, check out all the reservoirs and lakes or rivers that he takes care of. I'd appreciate you guys doing that. If you want to join the conversation on social media, we'd really appreciate that. Otherwise, we hope you'll tune in and we'll see you next week.